me how many dots are there now. Quick, how many dots? I'm seeing 15, a lot of 15, correct. There are 15 dots. Oh, splat, look what has happened now. Look what has happened. All right. Could you tell me how many are under the splat? How many dots are under the splat? There are 15 dots, how many are under the splat? And the rule is, all right, you'll soon see the rule. How many are on down? Any number sentence that we can write? Well, how about if I tell you that those two splats, the same amount is under them? Would that help? Would, would that help if I told you that the, the splats have the same because this is a black, black splat and a black splat? Then the number are the same under them. Would that help? So how many is under each splat? All right, let's, let's move on. And how did you know? How did you know? I'm, I'm sorry if I, if I, the problem, my problem is that, oh, is my screen gone? I have to be careful. And how else could you know? Let's look under the splats to see how many shapes there are. So there are five, two, four, six. That means there are six there. All right, so just, so I'm, I'm not talking to your students, I'm talking to your teachers. So first we introduce one unknown. Um, the children were working on one thing that they, they, they didn't know what was under the splat. Now they're working out two splats, but they are the same value, right? Because they are the same color. So let's, let's look on some more. How many dots are there here? There are 17, All right? Now let's, we've changed it up a bit. I'm gonna move a bit faster. We've changed it up a bit. Now there are three. So students will now have to figure out um, what is left over and what, how would you divide that amount in the three, all right? So there it goes. All right, how many dots do you see? I'm just going through the variety that they have, 14. Now it is a little bit different because now we have splats of different colors. And once we have splats of different colors, that means they're, co they're, they're covering different numbers. So our question is, how many could be under the green splat? And what are the combinations? Could I see the combinations that we could get under the green and the, the yellow? What combinations could we get for this one, right? And again, you see students would really have to stop and think. Um, and there is not one. So Sophia, had, Sophia belongs in a high school because she has really set up her thing properly. So they would really have to stop and think to calculate when they are no different, right? Um, and if I show you what's on the one splat, can you then figure out what's on the, the other splat, okay? And what you really want is for students to be explaining and, and, and and talking to you on how they come up on the answer because there are several different ways that these answers can can you can be had. All right. So, so there there are there are lots of combinations of them <clears throat> when you give the splat and the dots and you don't give the total. So there, there's a whole variety of them that you can work through with your students. All right. So I'm just going to move through them. There's double with a single. As I said, there are about 50 of them that you can select um, to use. So let us have Think and wonder, wonder and think. Does anybody know where that comes from? That's from my favorite author, Dr. Seuss. Think and wonder, wonder and wonder and think. What? Why use this type of activity for algebra? It looks like a simple counting and number and addition and subtraction. Does anybody want to tell me why you would use this kind of activity for algebra? Is there anybody who wants to answer why? Is this is this type of activity of any use to teaching algebra? I don't know, Davian, if you can look at the raised hands and, and take some answers. Sure, I've, I've allowed participants to unmute themselves. So if somebody wants to jump in and unmute and, and give an answer. Afternoon, Natalie, critical thinking. 
You heard critical that thinking, yes. Good. Yes, I did. Critical thinking and, and how specific to algebra. Let, let's talk, let's, let's put on our alba, algebra caps. Anybody want to talk? Why is it specific? What can this be? How is this helping specific to algebra? Yes. Good afternoon. Um, because it involves um, finding unknown amounts. It, it, it involves finding unknown amounts. Exactly. Yes. And it, it does it in a way that's, that it has almost gamified it. Eh? Do you think, how do you think that you, is this an activity that you think you can use? Good afternoon, yes. Is it, and and you, can this activity be simplified or can you level it up? So this activity, as it is, sometimes you'll have to make some, some little changes, right? So this is, this is one good activity um, because it really has the children thinking about finding the unknown. And it is done in a, in a way where they, they are going to be successful. So they are, they're not seeing a whole lot of letters because, you know, the children, once they start to see letters into the math, what, where letters come from, right? Language arts. They start to get nervous and shaky. So, so we, are, we are introducing the algebraic thinking without worrying the children yet about this x and y finding x and y. okay all right so let, let's, let's move on uh to another activity that we call math talks all right again you may need your pencil and paper there is the uh the link at the bottom of the page this is not again this is not an interactive link what it is when you go on the website Said, all you're going to see is pictures of these slides, which you can copy off and, and adjust. But it is, not a, it is not yet a virtual tool or an interactive tool that you will, you will be able to, to show the children. But it is very useful and you can figure out how you're going to use it. All right, so let, let's look at the math talk. So here's the first picture that, that I took off. And we have two chickens is equal to six bags of salt. How much salt is a chicken worth? Let's look at that and think about it. Um, your mics are unmuted. So who would like to, how much, how much salt is a chicken worth? I mean, three salts, I, I'm hearing three salts. Um, and who answered three, the three, three salts? Very strong. Very Explain how you got your answer to be three salts. I divided the six by the two chickens. I divided the two by the six. I did six by two. Um, and yeah. why did you divide six by two? To, to, get, the, everyone, to get the equal amount. Three bags. There are three salts. Because there are two chickens and I need them to get equal amount. Share the salt equally. Uh, Good, good, um, good, good chicken. May I say something? I shared. Sure, go ahead, Dean. All right. Um, basically, let us think about patterning for now. Say you have, think about raising chicken. So you buy. Dean, I lost you there for a minute. Um, Dean, you want to go again? I would use a domino effect. Are you hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing you know, Dean. Go ahead. I would say I would say I will use patterning. So obviously you have two chickens to feed, right? Mm -hmm. And say, for example, these were feed, bags of feed. So think about bags of feed instead of salt. Right. So and you and you purchase six bags of feed. So obviously you think that one chicken will eat three bags of feed. So it, it, it will share equally among the chickens. That's how I look at it. Okay. Okay. I hear you. So in your mind, bags of feed versus salt make the, the illustration even a little bit more meaningful. Precisely. Right. Um, persons can relate to that a little better perhaps. Yes. Especially the children. Right. Indeed. 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 Um, was there any other answer or question to this? I think we lost Nicole there for a minute, but I'm waiting for her to rejoin. I would say, let's, good afternoon. Go I ahead. would say, I would say treat them both as fractions. So look at the chicken as two parts. And we want therefore to share the other side, which is equal into all, into two parts also. Right. 
So you have like equivalent fractions, right? So the chicken are two parts and share the salt into two parts. So you get three. Right. I, I think you're thinking um, more, yeah. more ratios, huh? Yes. Okay. Or equivalent fraction, right? Right, okay. right. It could be ratio. Can I? Good afternoon. Ratio. Same as equivalent ratio. Good afternoon. In, in the child's mind, uh, the child is seeing two chicken and six salt. So that child is giving, sharing the chickens or the salt with, with each chicken that he or she sees. So they are dividing. Right. But let me ask another question quickly while I wait for Nicole to rejoin us. Is, is this something that you could perhaps be doing even um, using, using Zoom or so? It could be. Mr. Leslie? Yes, it could be. Yes. It could. It could. Yes, you could even allow, good afternoon, you could even allow the children to annotate and then to circle to show on the screen to show how you'd make this part of the equation equal to that part of the equation. Good afternoon. Right, go ahead. Am I, am I, I was thinking, I was thinking that it could also be used to, to, um, for sets. So, the two chickens would represent the number of sets that the salt needs to be shared into. Okay. Right. So it, it's um, we want to ensure that we are sharing it in equal parts. So right. even if it is even if it is a slow, let's say it is for grade one to grade one to three, it could be easily done. These are the two set the two parts that the that the salt all of what salt is there needs to be shared into, and we could say, for example, that it needs to be shared equally. Uh huh. Right, because it's an even number that's there, mm -hmm. and so they would know that each exactly. each, each the, it would be shared into two, and each portion would get three. Right. Um, before I ask Nicole to come back in, and I think she has now she was having a little problem a while ago. I think she's back. Nicole, can yeah, you? Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. Right, I'm good, back. Very good. Uh, I saw a response that I want to highlight because uh, it's a part of the problem that we sometimes have as adults, and I'm going to read the response on Fire Tablet. Fire tablet said, and I'm reading from the chat, I use reasoning. If two chicken equals six salts, then automatically one would be one would be three. And you see that notion of you saying automatically, you see, oh, because you are able to automatically come to the answer. You seem to think, and we would all think, well, this is obvious. If two chickens equal six salts, clearly it's automatic. One must be equal to three. But algebraic thinking that you are employing there is not something that children automatically resort to. It is something that we have to teach and that they have to learn and develop over time. So some of these strategies that you are talking about, the sharing and so on, is what helps the students to build this kind of thinking. Nicole, I'm going to go back to you now. Yes, okay. could I say something before Nicole comes? Sure. Or can I also say something? Hello? Yes, go ahead. Yes, there, there are I, a lot I, more. I, don't, don't worry. Okay, I would introduce it this way. So for the Lovely. students to get it, if they are going to, we know the children like to play games like starving or stocking. So I would use the two chickens as leaders and allow them to pick. Much of those. So when they are finished picking, they will right. have three right. persons per team. Plus the leader, the chicken. Oh. oh that's right. Okay. Great. I, mm -hmm. Right, thank you. I know I heard somebody else, but I'm, um, let me just allow that person and then Nicole very quickly. Hi, good afternoon. So, can I speak? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, can I so, speak? Uh, let's hear from this young lady first. I'm not sure who this is. Okay, I'm Leticia from Guyana. Yes, Leticia. Primary. So, I've taught grade one before. So, what I'm thinking is that with this activity, you can also help them to learn how to share. So I would let them like, pair and then give them six objects and then let them divide it among Like I'm going to say, okay, so this is six objects. They're going to say, okay, one for you, one for me, one for you, one for me until it's finished. So they would see that, okay. Then they're going to say that, okay, miss, I have three. My other friend have three. And then that's how they're going to actually divide it among themselves. Okay. That's all so notes are at the same time. All right. Thank you very much, Leticia. Yeah. That's exactly how they would split. 
All right, Nicole, I'm coming back to you now. Go ahead. All right. So there, there are lots of these, and there, you, as, as you realize, there are a lot of ways that we can, children can think about it. Um, one of the things that I want to say about that is sometimes we should leave the children a bit uh, and let them let them figure things out, not giving them the answer, or telling them how to think, but uh, through their through questioning, really find out. How, how their thinking is and just kind of uh, um, let them sit and think for themselves. All right, so let us look at something like this now. How much salt is a chicken worth? How about if we set it up this way? This one's a little bit more difficult than the first one. Let's take a look at this. All right, so let us look at a, a question like how much salt is a chicken worth now? And how did you get your answer? Would like to think about it and and let us know themselves if they wish good afternoon i would like to try Go ahead. i would say i would say that one chicken is equal to six salt one chicken uh, is, how did you come up on your answer i said well one chicken is equal to one chicken so i would take away the two chicken mm -hmm. on the other side and then i'd be left with one chicken and then on this side, and one chicken would be equal to six salt. It's algebra. That's exactly. the activity. So is, is, is that ability that you're using, is it after you've learned algebra or is it before? Before, I, I think I could. That's the skill that you're using. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't use algebra here. I looked at it without the algebra, and then I realized that it was an algebra um, that I actually used. Okay, so you cancelled one chicken from one side with another chicken from another side. Right. All right. All right. So let's move on because we have a lot of activities, but I just want you to think about activities like this um, and how it, 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 how it addresses the students' thinking. All right? How much salt is it worth if I put some salt on this side and chickens and salt? You know, it, it becomes more complex, right? So these are the type of questions that you can give your students to have a discussion and to engage them um, on their thinking. All right, how about if we do something like this? How many coins are in one pouch? The same kind of question, but it's, it's getting a little bit more complex. All right, so think and wonder, wonder and think. Uh, is this type of activity useful for, for algebra? And that's the question um and how could you use it i'm not going to take any questions now how could we use it these are the questions you have to ask yourself and can you simplify an activity like this or can you level it up for students who are more advanced all right all right a point i want to make here quickly is um we need to speak about conceptual understanding and procedural fluency and we have to be very, very careful in times of COVID because what we may find out, the trap that we may, may find ourselves in is that we're handing out a lot of worksheets and a lot of instruction or teaching is not happening. Just because of the, just because of the, the, the space that we're in, it is much more difficult to give instruction. So we find that we're doing things and we're promoting procedural fluency rather than conceptual understanding. And when I'm talking about conceptual understanding, we are saying that children need to have that conceptual understanding. They have to understand how, how math works, that integrated function of how math works and um, just why they work this way. I, I, I don't know how to explain it much simpler than that. While procedural fluency is just about knowing how to do the thing. So a lot of children can do algebra but have no real understanding of why why they're doing things um, and why it works so hopefully by the end of the session there will be a, a better level of conceptual understanding all right one of the main things with algebra that students need to understand is the concept of equality uh, this is a big thing that a lot of students do not understand and i, I beg you please ensure that this is this is this is a foundation for algebra so equality is saying 
how do I put it? A lot of people misunderstand what the equal sign means. And they think that equal sign means, is, it, that equal sign is more of an operational thing rather than a relationship. So they think, for example, I think I have an example here. Four plus five means equals, means do something with four plus five, you add them, do something, and then equal means write the answer after the equal sign. And that's what most of us, most of us think and, and most of us go forward. Five plus four, do something with the five plus four and then equal means write the answer after. But that's really not what the equal sign means. The equal sign is really saying that there is a relationship beside, between the two sides. And the relationship is that any number or expression that is on the left side of the equal sign is of the same value as what is on the right side. Now, this may sound very simple, but it is a concept that students must grasp if they are to be successful at algebra, that equality. So what it is saying is that whatever number or expression, and we know expression is, is numbers without the equal sign, whatever expression is on the left-hand side is of the same value as those on the right-hand side of the equal sign. And you may say, of course, because five plus four, if I put the answer there, nine, the value is the same. So what's the big deal of um, making that distinction? Well, let me, let me try and explain it. So let us look. So a child who, who thinks it means put the answer here will be able to do these questions, the questions out like this very easily and we'll get them correctly. There'll be no problem. But let us say we move on to questions like this. 5 plus 4 equals something plus 3. Now, the child star has now boarded the sinking Titanic of algebra because they don't know what to do. They don't understand the value on both sides need to be equal. They just think, do something with 5 plus 4 and put the answer there. Where did that 3 come from? I'm not even going to pay it any mind and ignore it. So they have launched themselves on the Titanic. And once we get to something like a question like this, I mean, the Titanic has now hit the iceberg. They are completely confused because equal, how can you, if I'm supposed to put the answer, what is the blank space doing on the side, right? So I'm saying, teachers, please, I beg you that you, you make sure you let the children understand the, the equality principle. And once we get to 2y equal x minus 3, the Titanic has sunk. Um, children are completely lost, and this is why once they get into high school, um, they don't even know what to do, all right? So just a little point there. All right, so one of the ways that we can ensure that our students understand this equality is using something called pan balance or balance scale. There, there are many different names for it. Now, here is the link to it. Um, David may put it up in the chat. So if you have a different tab open, you can work it along while we're doing it. Um, I'm not able to see the chat right now because I'm afraid that I get kicked off. Uh, so here is pan balance. Here's a link, and I'm going to show you. Uh, let me let me bring up what it looks like. All right, let's bring up what it looks like. Okay, so here it is. No, so let us say that we explain to children that what we want is for the scale to be equal, and it's equal when the both sides are even like this. So let us say, I'm sorry, I have to move my camera a bit. Let us say I put a four here and I put a, a 10 here. We notice that the scale is not balanced, right? Four on one side, 10 on the other side, the scale is not balanced. What can I do to make the scale balance? And that's a question that you ask the children. What can I do to get that to balance? Um, I'm not seeing the chat, so. Could you unmute it? Can, are they able to unmute their mic? Hello? I don't Hello? Know. Yes, go ahead, no, Brian. Are you hearing us, Nicole? Yes, I'm hearing. What, what can Brian, we do we're hearing you. Go ahead. to get this to be equal? Uh, to get it equal, remember, one side is four, the other is 10. Right. So I'd have to and get off. Add more to four. 
I'd have to more. How much more? After ask, is that the only? Let's check it. Are we going to stop chat? Is that the only thing that we could do? Is that the only thing that we could have done? We could also we could subtract from the ten. We could subtract from the ten. What would we have to subtract from the ten? At least three. Three. Subtract from the ten. If we subtract from the ten, we could six, and then we would get the four. And then oh, we, we, we could subtract yes, three from the balance. ten, right? Three from three. the ten and add it to the four. Yeah, oh, so and get both that balance. Balance. Oh, that we could subtract three from the ten. Is that what they're saying? Yes, we could yes. Um, subtract three, three from the three ten and add to the four. Yes, and add the three. To, could we do that? Yes, yes it's balanced. Yes. Uh, anything else that we could? Do? Yes. Yes, you could also multiply. All right, so. Two. And we could um, multiply four by two. Well, yeah. And four by four two, by and then plus two. Take away two from the ten. And, and then ten we could ten. add two. Yes. yes. Is that is is that At balance? The ice cool. All right. Um, you could also you could also multiply each of them by the other number. But, so this one is the, okay. All right. Ten so what are four yes. three, ten not two. Four by ten. What about if I did something like this? All right, let me let me reset the table. Let me clear here. What if I did something like? Oh, let me give you a number. Hmm. At all. Wow! Come back over this side screen. What could I could I start to do big number? Was like hundred and thirty eight. It doesn't have to be small numbers, right? 138 divided by 6, how about that? What could I put on the other side? What could I put on the other side? Multiply the one. with this one. Multiply 6, the balance, the equation. Put 138, 6 times 6, 138, multiply on the other side. <laughs> No, that didn't help. Put what? Just put, put 23 on the other side. Times 23. Put the 23. All right. Times six. Now, there are a lot of things you can do. Let us say I do this. So here, here, here's a question here. I put 25 here and I put 25. Is there something that I can do to both sides and let it stay balanced? I want you to do do something with both sides, but I want they, I want it to still remain balanced. Is there something can I can see? do? Sure, go ahead. Okay, so you could multiply both sides by the same number or divide both sides by the same number. Uh, give me a number. Give me what number do you want me to multiply it by? Five times five. Let's say five. Multiply by five. Sorry, hold on. Multiply by five. Huh? I should do the same thing for the other side. Yes, do the same thing for the other side. All right. No. Why would I ask children? The here, here's the question. Why would I ask children a question like that? Why is that quite that specific question? What could I do? They were uh -huh. even at 25. What could I do? Why would I want children to be thinking about something like that? Because you want them to find out different ways of arriving at the answer. And anything you do on one side, you have to do on the other side. Right. Yeah. I am leading them to that principle of anything you do on one side and you do the same yeah. thing on the other yeah. side, the equation remains. Balance. Balance, right? So we could take like, it to the, the extreme, mathematical right? operation. We are to introduce the mathematical operation to the children and they are to use mathematical languages. So I don't like to use the word anything in my class. I'd like them to express their answers using the mathematical language. So if right. you're going to multiply on one side right. and divide by the other side, 
we are using the mathematical language. Can okay. I say something? I also would like for the children to learn the different relationships between the goat guy. Right. Of right. the equal so sign. Is, right. Your, your objective here is for them to understand the relationship between one side of, of the equation and the other side of the equation side. and what needs to happen if you are if you are to keep it balanced and that if you have a balanced equation um, if you add subtract or whatever you do to one side i know a teacher doesn't like it but if whatever operation you do to one side if you do the same operation on the other side the equation will remain balanced right so that is where we are going with this. So if you have your students doing it for a while, this is something that they will be understanding. Do we agree? Mommy. Yes. Are we agreeing? Yes. We agree. Yes. Yes. So, so let's, let's move on from the balance. Um, algebra tells is not something that I was familiar with when I was younger. It is a, I, I don't know if it existed, but it's something that I have been introduced to more recently um some of you may be familiar with it some of you may not be but it is something that really is the visual aspect of algebra uh, to our students all right so let's talk about algebra tells all right now there's a couple of things that you need. so there is a small tile that we're going to call a one that tile represents one the, the, the value one and that tile is a small yellow tile. Then we have a tile that is a green tile that is going to represent X. And you have to let the children know X just means that we don't know what that amount is. So we have one, we have X, but we don't know what the amount is. And then we have a tile for X squared. At the primary level, we probably are not using the X squared as much, but I just wanted you to see that the X tile also exists. And if you know, you can look at the relationship between the size of the x and the x squared. You know, it's x width and x length, and that's why we got x squared. Right? So algebra tiles has a tile that represents 1, a tile that represents x, or several tiles that represent x, and tiles that represent x squared. It also has tiles that represent negatives. Now, I do understand that they do not do negative numbers in primary school. But students can understand that one minus one is going to have a value of zero, right? And if they understand that one minus one has a value of zero, then they can understand and extrapolate that understanding to say that x minus x is also going to have a value of zero. And x squared minus x squared is equal to zero. So what you have is the tiles in colored and the negative of the tiles are in red. So Another understanding that you have to get the children to, to grasp before we move on to algebra tiles is a concept called zero pairs. So one, a positive one and a negative one is going to equal zero. Students can understand that. So therefore, x minus x is going to be equal to zero and x squared minus x squared is equal to zero. This is a concept that they must understand before we start using algebra tiles. Everybody's okay with this? All right. So Make sure your students understand zero pairs, and this is what we were talking about here. A uh, one plus a negative one giving us a zero, that's called a zero pair. The next thing that they have to understand is that the goal is to get the variable or the unknown, that x, on one side of the equation by itself. So when we're using algebra tiles and when you're doing algebra, that's really what you're trying to do. And also to understand that whatever is done on one side of the equation, whatever operation, whatever you do on one side must also be done on the other side for it to remain balanced and equal all right and they learned this from the the pan box all right so here is a uh, website that has a lovely lovely algebra tiles so you can click on them david could you put it in the chat for them for those who want to to use it right away okay so if you look mathagon this is their polypad and they have a lot of virtual tools here. So they have a geometry, they have number, number bars, fraction bars, algebra tiles. Um, they have quite a bit. But what we're going to be looking at today is algebra tiles. Now, uh, I'm going to show you how algebra tiles work, and I'm going to show you how the program works. 
So the first thing that I like to do down here on the bottom of the left here, they have what they call grid options. Now I like to put up some grid options because I, my hand lean and I cannot draw very straight. So I like to put these dots on here because it kind of guides me um, when I'm writing. At the bottom here, uh, in the middle of the, the pad, we have pen and eraser and duplicate and we have colors. So that's really what we need. So one of the ways that there are many ways of using algebra ties in terms of how you present it to your children. Um, but this is the way that I use it. And you can also go on YouTube and you'll see how different teachers use it. Um, so you have the pointing tool and the pen. So let me select the pen. And what I like to do is rule off. I like to rule off part of my part of my paper. Very good. Oh, my pen is not working. Hold on. I'm sorry. Because I think it's because the internet is so slow. It is not. It is not giving me. It is not working. Hold on a second. Okay. Could you write on your paper? I'm going. Let us. Let us not let internet kill us today. So could you write on your paper x? I'll tell you what to write. X plus five equals seven x plus 5 is equal to 7. And I would have written x plus 5 is equal to 7 on this side here, where, where it's, it seems to be working a little bit better. So we're going to write over here. No, it is not. Sorry. x plus 5 is equal to 7. I would usually have written the question over here, but the pen is working. Um, it's only giving straight lines. But once you do it, you will be able to, um, to write x plus 5 equals to 7. Then what you would do is draw a line straight down. And we're going to make that line represent the equal sign. All right? So that line represents the equal sign. So we have what is on one side of the equation and what is on the other side of the equation. All right? So we're starting with x. So we're going to represent our equation x plus 5 equals 7 with tiles. So we drag across an X, we have one X, and we drag across five of them. One, two, three, four, five. So on this side of the equation of X plus five equals seven, we have the X and we have the plus five here. Then on the other side of the equation, we have seven. So we're going to drag across seven. Now there's a button here called duplicate. So once it is there, I don't have to keep dragging. I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if you look, what we have represented with the tiles is the equation that we have. That's how it works. Is there anybody who's on it who is able to get, get it to write properly there? You probably do. All right, so we have x plus five is equal to seven, represented here by the tiles. Now, our goal is to get x to be by itself, to get the variable to be by itself. What would I need to do to get x? Is there anything that I can do on this side to get rid of these five here? And because they know the zero principle, they are going to know, they, they, they are going to, the, what they know about zero pairs, they are going to say, all right, we will need to put five negative ones, all right? So we put five negative ones. Now, once you do that, we also know that once you do one thing, something on here, we put on the five negative ones here. I will also have to put them over on the other side, put five of them on the other side. One, two, three, four, five. So we did, we added five on this side and we added five on this side. So now what I would have the children do and what I would be writing here is what do I have on this side? I write it as an equation. So I would have x, x plus 5 minus 5 is equal to 7 minus 5. Everybody with me? I'm sorry that I can't write it. Um, so we now have x plus 5 minus 5 is equal to 7 minus 5. All right? Now this is where the children are getting this understanding that why things become minus and plus when you move it across because we're taught just to move it across all right let us match these up now and we notice when we match these up here we're getting these zero pairs 
So what happens is that the numbers automatically fade away. And we do the same thing on this side. We do the same thing on this side. Oh, let me, I'm not so exact. And then we can clearly see that the answer would be x is equal to 2. Everybody following what I'm doing? Is this making sense? Yes, yes. yes it, is. Yes, it is. is. All right, so we are, not, we are now not just telling the children it that is. because it's you just, have a number over there, it go across the equal sign and it changes the positive. Right, they are seeing what is happening. All right, so let's work on another one. Let's write on your paper, x minus 3 is equal to 8. Let me write it down to make sure I'm going with you. x minus 3 is equal to 8. Let's, let's clear. Right down here on the left-hand side, we have clear the canvas. So we can just easily clear off those that you had already. All right? And you would just draw a line here once you've done one problem on the right-hand side, and you start the second problem. So x minus 3, how are we going to show x minus 3? We have 1x. We drag one x across, and then we have minus negative three. So we need to put three of them. One, two, three. And then on the right-hand side of the, the equation, the right-hand side of the equal side, they have eight. But it's not negative eight, it is positive. So we need to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this, this represents x. Minus three is yes, equal to one, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you'd have the children write it, and they can see the representation right away. Now the question is, we want to to put the x by itself. We want to to make it that the variable is by itself. What would we need? negative negative one, negative one, negative one? And the children would tell you because they know we need to put these positive ones here. Uh, and because we put three of them on this side, we are now going to have to also put three of them on this side because we learned from the scale that once we do one thing to one side and we do it to the other side, the equation remains balanced and, equal, and, and you know, all is happy. So we would, then would ask the children to write x minus three plus three. Here is a plus three. x minus three plus three is equal to eight plus three. Are you seeing where that the, those plus threes and those minus threes are now coming from? They can clearly understand. Then we're going to make zero pairs. Wow, wow. zero pair, zero pair, zero pair. We've gotten rid of those there, but there are no zero pairs to make, be made over here. So we now know that X is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. And it is all vision to understand. All right, everybody okay? All right, let me just do one more. We're running out of time, but let me do one with 5x. Could you write down for me? 5x is equal to 15. 5x is equal to 15. So that's the one we're working on now. 5x is equal to 15. Let me clear, clear, clear the canvas. And there we go. So if we have 5x, 1x, 2x, 3x, let's put them like, like this, 4x, 5x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, let's line them up just because. All right, 5x. And 5x is represented here, it's equal to 15. All right, and it's a positive 15. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, 15. All right. So we're going to put them there. We have all of them. I'm just going to leave them scattered here, but you, you would put them in a nice, neat um, line so that children could see that they're 15. All right. So we have 5x is equal to 15. But what we're trying to do is to find what 1x is. Now, what if I take these 5x and I'm going to move them a little closer to this side so, so you can visually, it's it's easier to see. What if I start sharing out? I know that I have to I have to divide this 5x into five groups. So I'm going to divide this 5x into five groups that I can get one. What if I start dividing this as well? 
and I put one there and one there and I divide them out evenly, um, giving one to each group at a time, all right? So we are now dividing the 15 into five groups. Isn't that what we're doing? We're dividing the 15 into five groups. And students can now see when we look that one X is equal to, one X is equal to three. Here's another X equal to, each X is equal to three. So that is how you would do something like this. All right, everybody okay? Are we all well? Everybody all right? All right, so why, why we want to get into algebra tiles is because it really gives the visual. Now, after a while, students will no longer need algebra tiles. Um, but when they're just learning it and understanding what is happening, it really sets an understanding of algebra. And once this is firm, once they get to high school, uh, their life will be much easier, right? So I'm, I'm saying this is the way that, one of the ways that we need to go in terms of explaining algebra, right? Uh, how you integrate it in your class or how you allow students to do it depends on the kind of tools they're using and what access you have. Is that um, technical? There is also the paper-based algebra type. Not hearing me? Yeah, no, somebody has a question. Okay. Is the algebra tiles applicable to like multiplications? The ones you did were with additions and subtraction. Like for example, X multiplied by five equal to 20. Is it applicable with something like that where you have yes, multiplication is. or division? Okay. Uh, remember the one we did, and I'm sorry, I don't have it there. Five X equal 15 is really five times x equal 15 remember once you write five x, x okay all right yeah get you it. what i'm saying yeah because five x is really five times x five groups of x is equal to 15 so yes and then this is how you would do for the multiplication any, any other questions I see some raised hands, but I, I can't see who, who it is. Just to come in. You want to take another question? Sure. May I? Sure, go ahead. Sure, go ahead. Yes, I love the use of this. It concretizes the concept of algebra. Or it gives it has the conceptualization to be um, clearer. Right. Um, real life scenarios can also, you know, be useful. Right, what we're trying to do, uh, and, and my thinking in the presentation is moving children, algebra is really an abstract way of thinking. Um, and the goal for mathematics is for children to be able to be abstract. We, we don't want, we would really prefer if by the time they got to high school and the, the, you know, all the students that they would not need uh, counting tools and so yes you will need tools to learn new concepts but um, we really want them to be thinking abstractly but once when once we are just about instructing the concept we, we give them something visual for them to, be able to to internalize that that understanding and that concept and then they're able to think abstractly once a student has done this a couple of times you know by the he will now know why the sign changes uh, and that is a question that even when, when I was teaching at the tertiary level, you know, students were, you just change the sign, but nobody knew why. Why are you changing the sign? You want to move it, the number across the equal sign, you just change the sign. No students understand why. All right? Um, just a question. Another question? Yes. Sure. Um, this website, this platform, um, I saw where you said algebra tiles. It can also be used to teach fractions also. Uh, this particular website, Mathagon, uh, let me move up. It has fraction bars. It has a lot of things here. But because we were focusing on algebra today, uh, I don't know if you're seeing when I'm going down, are you seeing that it has a lot of, um, yeah, it, it, it has a lot here. And this is, a, 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 as I told you, oh, I don't know if so I did. I can, it's a free website. Free, 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 free. Oh, so I can just go on it and manipulate the fraction yes, section. Yes, yes, okay. yes, absolutely. All Thank of those are available to you. Any other question? And, and the students have access to it as well. So you actually could give students some, some algebra problems and ask them to use the, this website 
to, to visualize and get their answer. Yes, I have a question. All right, there, there's one more thing before we run out of time that I wanted to do. Let me just get rid of this. Um, um, Nicole, just, just before you go ahead, there was a question that somebody had. I just wanted to quickly take that question before you move on. Sure. It is possibly answered if I go to the software and look at it. But when you have a problem such as um, five take away X equals two, we usually have problems um, getting the children to understand how to do it. Can this platform address that? All right, remember we did five take away x equal two. Let us. All right, how about if you guide me through it? And so far we have been looking at oh, um, my, my positive, but in this case we are looking at minus x. So yeah. okay, so let us let us let us see let us see. Um, right. that's a two core wants to guide us through it. I think Nicole. I don't know. Uh, what is that, Devan? Um, I saw another user, another um teacher, Galaxy A two core, who seems to want to guide us through the. The, the, the process. Okay, sure, head, sure. Okay. Sure. Um, Go ahead. Uh, all right. Now you had already using the tile. You had already explained the the x and the minus x. So we sure. could, in this case, because we have a minus x, we could add the x to to both sides, yeah. and then it would now become five is equal to two plus x, and then we could take it from there. All right, you want you want to walk me through it? Um what who am I speaking with? Um you're speaking to Richard. Richard, you want to tell me what to do? Are you seeing my screen? You tell me what to do and I'll do. Okay, all right. Now could you tell me using the algebra tiles, what would I put on the left hand side here? Okay, so you have a five and the so minus x. I would put what? Five. So put five, five of these, right? Six. Yes. Five. Right. Am I, am I, tell me if I'm doing it right. I'm just following your instruction. So I put five. Yes, and then you have minus X, and you put a minus X there. Then I put a minus X here. Right, right. And, and on I, the other side, you put the two things, yes. And then and on, on the, side the other side, you put two singles, yes. Two, two X. Two, two singles. No, not two X. Right. Two, two singles. Two singles, Sorry. yes. Right. Two singles. And then okay. now and you're then, going to write. To so each side, now you're going to add the x. Put the, okay. add the x to each side, to, so you put right. I'm going to add put the x, x here. here. Yes, and uh -huh. put it on and the other side. Uh -huh. And put it on the other side as well. And then I put one on the other side, right? Right. And then and it then takes us right. now to 5 is equal to 2 plus x, and we can solve it from there. Okay, no, so so let, let, let's step back a bit. I mean, let me, mm -hmm. so, so, so when I put the x and the negative x, I get a zero pair here. Right, right. right. So, so five is one. equal to five is right. equal to equal to five is equal to. Let me move. Two plus x, or if you want to say x plus two, <coughs> you just say x plus two. So is that the right. end? And then the now what the you do now? Put it at the end. Well, it doesn't matter if you where you want to put it, but. And then now, what we need we to do finish, is to get. No, no, no. We need to get rid of the two from the right, right side okay. because you want x by itself. Okay. So you're now going okay, to use. So what should I do? So you're now going to use um, minus two singles. Take away two um, two singles from both sides. Then I'm going to put two negative two, negative two, negative one, yes. and negative one over here. Right on both sides. On both sides. On both sides. Okay. Right. So it becomes right, three is equal. So it becomes so it, the zero concept would come. So it becomes three is equal to x. So, so I mean, so yeah. I'll have to pair these. Right, pair it up now. Sorry, right. pair these together. Right, and right. you get and you get three is equal to x or x is equal to three. So Nicole, yes, I understand fully what he's saying, but I, there's still a little gap which I think the children might have a problem with. Which is. The first part when he took um when he subtracted the when he had the minus x on the left side, um yes. would children be readily um would they readily know or realize that they would need to subtract to take to add the other x to both but if I may come back in remember we had established that we were using the tiles the the 
one, the, the positive one, the minus one, and relate it with the x and the minus x as well. So. Yeah, man, I know, but when you when you cancel out one side, you basically now going to have an x on the other side. Would a child be, if a child says to me, oh, in the first instance, I'm going to put in five minus ones on the left side and leave the minus x by itself on the left side. I don't really understand what I'm saying. In you're, you're breaking up because my internet is bad, so I'm, I'm really not hearing hearing so well. I'm sorry. sorry let's so go again, are you hearing me now? I'm hearing. Yes. All right. In the first instance, when you have the problem there, if a child says to me, "I am going to put five minus ones on the left side, and then do the same thing on the right side," so the child is only left with a minus x on the left side. Um, do you see where a child would really think along that line? May I ask? Child is going to, okay, let us, let us, okay, no, all right, I, I am with you. So let us, let us do it that way. Let us clear the canvas. Yes, because uh, most likely children will. No, no, let, okay. let us see, um, okay. because it is absolutely a way that a child could have operated, right? So let us go. On to the, I, I hope I heard you well. I hope I heard and understood. Okay. One, two, three, four, uh, yeah. five, yeah. and then um, a negative x. Is that what you're saying? And then on the right side, the two on this side. Yeah. Right. So is that what you're saying? And then the child said we're going to get rid of this five here. So we're going to put negative five. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Because in essence, they are thinking. All right. Yeah. No, no, no. We're we're going. I agree with you. I agree with you. I'm going with you. Uh, and then we are to do, and the child knows that we're to do the same thing on the other side. Good. Right? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see. I don't know. Maybe it will work. I don't know. All right, so do we have three, four, five? And then we're going to do, uh, make, we're going to get yeah, zero pairs, right? Yes. All right, hold on. I don't know what's happening with that zero pair there. Well, we understand it's there. All right, let me. All right. So, and we do the same thing here. So, okay. we're ending up with negative x is equal to negative. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. In their mind, they have x by itself. I'm sorry, I can hardly hear you. That's better. So, in the child's mind, I do have x by itself. It's just right. The minus x. So how do we take it from there? Oh. You multiply okay, both you sides me. by negative one. That's, that's so you have taught them. You have taught them the rules of integers. No, 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 no. We're, we're that, yes, that's a procedural way. But what she's trying to ask, and I do understand, is how do you show it visually? How do you show it visually? Um, and not just a procedural method. Right. So. So could say that we need to, we don't like negative numbers. I mean, you tell me what you think. Oh. I'm sorry, this is how I am. I'm, 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 I'm not trying to be difficult. No, man, I know. I was expecting you to explain. <laughs> um, I was expecting you to explain. Um, would we have taught them about um, coefficients? Maybe I'm, I'm not hearing anything. All right. There's some... There's some disturbance um, going on there. But I think the question that they're asking, and you are, you are, you are answering it, Nicole, is uh, now that you have chosen that approach and you have um, negative x equal negative 3, how do you get the child to understand conceptually and not just to learn a rule, but what they're doing now to go from negative x to a positive x? Oh, oh well, uh, may I speak? I, don't know. I think I have an idea about that. I don't sure if I'm able to explain it. But, um, may I attempt oh, it? Sure. Okay, so from where you have the negative x and the negative 3, what we could do, we could now add, um, add, add 2x, um, put on, add 2x to our 2 the left side, and since since I add two x, I would add two groups of three to the right side. 
Because remember, what, whatever I do so put, to one so side, I have to put two X's on this side. Put two X's yes, on this side. And two, yes, and two groups of three on the other side. No, no oh, not but remember, X. we're telling them. So if we put two X on the right. <laughs> here we're a little bit beyond our time but i would want to just address this before we before we get out um because it's a it's a question that i know comes up and it this problem follows children all the way to to high school um and and it is it is one that i would really want us to address so what you were doing before nicole is the approach that i usually advise where and the rule that 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 you observed before where once you change both sides in the same way, then the equation remains unchanged. The equality that was intact originally is still intact. So as long as we keep changing both sides of the equation, in the same way, then the, the, the equations remain intact. So, um, so what's that? Sorry, are unstable, so it's... I can hear you. In are you hearing Kalisha, yes i am may i respond yes sure, sure all right when i'm teaching algebra um I, I love the concept that you brought us about you know them knowing the positive and the negative the part to become zero but my emphasis is always on what happened to the variable so if and i would say okay then Let's say you had a pot with some contents in it. Some was taken out. You don't know how much. So that is the variable. And five dumplings left. How would I be able to get back the original contents? Miss, you would have to add it back. So in this area where you have a number minus x equals to a number, what happened to the variable? It's the variable that was extracted. So since it was the one that was taken out, then that is the one that should be added back to get the original value. So from there, they would have added, they would have placed the positive bar on both sides for X and would have continued to solving their problem as the gentleman initially um, walked us through. So the emphasis there for that teacher would say, focus on what occurred what happened to the variable if something was added to it to get back its original value you'd have to take off what was added if so if it, if it is the variable that was taken out rip add it back and we can go from there okay nicole so, um excuse me but what would you do with the negative in front of the one Uh, repeat, please. What would you do with the negative sign in front of the ones, the three ones? Okay, let's go again. Well, I'm speaking with respect to the original question. It wasn't it three minus x equal two? Was it that or five minus no, x five, equal five two? Five minus x equal two. Right. Yeah. So five minus x equals two. What is the variable in this question? It is x. What happened? x was taken out so to get the original value of that side what would you do add it back miss and if you know if you're adding x to one side as they would have learned you also have to add it to the other side to keep the equation balanced so remember when you're doing the algebra so teachers are, it's about so what happened to the variable over to these so negative. you wouldn't end up with a negative x in in um in this context if we are done what the gentleman um, spoke about. So it's the focus. What happened to the variable? It was taken out. So what should we do now? Add it back to get the original value. It's like I had some money in a piggy bank. Some was taken out. What can we, and that would be the X. What can I, what we do to get back what was originally there? Miss, add it back. Mm. Right? And there we will not end up with a negative X. Right, and I, I hear that, and in the interest of time, because we really are almost out of time now, um, and in the interest of time, and you know, just, just so that we can move on, um, what Nicole was doing earlier, 
where, and the truth is some students will proceed in the way that we have now proceeded and end up with negative x might equal negative three. And that's fine, that is perfectly fine. Um, but what Nicole is modeling here, I believe, is this process of now making our x positive. Um, clearly at some point they will learn about multiplying both sides by negative one or dividing both sides by negative one, that kind of thing. But for now, if you really want the concept to be understood, you are adding x to both sides and then continuing as, as usual, which is what Nicole is here modeling. I hope everybody saw that. I mean, I'm not hearing so well, but if you were seeing on the screen that was that is the way to get around it visually so the person who answered asked the question originally i i don't know if that that was helpful um so, I, I don't. If, if i can just walk through the solution for those who so perhaps didn't see it with I negative x equal negative three I, would, would you like me to put it back let, 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 let me let me put it back so that we can we can um so that there's clarity it was it was um Negative x uh, and negative three, right? Right. So what we would now need to do here is uh, make that negative x positive, and try to indeed. So having added x to that side, we have to add x to the other side as well. So negative x plus that x gives you a zero pair. So on that side, now we have nothing. That's on the left hand side. But on the right hand side, we have x minus three. And that can't be simplified any further. So what we now have is x minus 3 is equal to 0. In order to get x alone on the right-hand side, you're going to have to add a 3 positive, that is now, to create 0 pairs. So you would now, uh, and then you'd have to add 3 on the left-hand side as well. So once you neutralize those and, and those become 0 pairs, you're, you're left with x alone on the right-hand side and three on the, 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 the left-hand side to get your solution. Three is equal to x or x is equal to three. Now, this is a little roundabout and that's fine. At some point, the students will develop more efficient ways of getting there. They might even observe that they have just dropped the negative sign. I've heard many students simply say, sir, drop the negative sign at this point because they, they observe that this lengthy process leads to that conclusion. If those are their conclusions, you are guiding them to be efficient and to be conceptually sound, but you're not necessarily going to hold them hard and fast to always do this lengthy process once they understand what they are doing. Um, Nicole, I know you have another thing or two to do. It's four o'clock and I am anxious. I know, I just want to give two websites. That's all I'm going to do. I'm just sure. going to give two websites and survey. Um, so so I, hopefully that would be helpful, um, but we have run out of time. So I want to give you an, another way that we can uh, have, have procedural fluency is with algebra games. And these are two websites that really have good algebra games, sorry, that you can use. So just to let you know that. Um, and also the last thing that we're doing, this is the link for you to uh, just do the quick survey that I had spoken about. So all you need to do, type in your, your RB, type this in here, this here and the survey will come up um, and we will collect your email and that is how you'll get the presentation. So that's basically it. I don't, I don't even think we can take any questions because we're at four o'clock. Um, I want to thank you for spending two hours with us because it's, it's been a long day, but hopefully uh, you have taken away something from, from the presentation today. Right. Um, thank you very much, Nicole. You, of course, have outdone yourself. If you could go back to that screen so that people are seeing it. Um, oh, well, sorry, 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 sorry. Right. Um, thank you very much for so able leading us. Um, I think algebra is one of those topics that we might have to come back to because of how, of how um, technical to some persons it might be. So go to the, go to the, 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 the URL and uh, complete the evaluation teachers and let us know what you'd want us to do in the next math planning session. Tomorrow, that is Wednesday at 2, we will have a planning session for social studies. That's not Wednesday, Thursday, sorry, today's Wednesday. So Thursday at 2, we will have a planning session for social studies. And then on Friday at 2, 
we will have a planning session for math grades one to three. So um, I will see you here tomorrow in this space for social studies. Remember, social studies is only taught at four to six. It's integrated studies at one to three. So tomorrow, the session really is designed for teachers who are teaching the subject, the discrete subject called social studies. Um, and then on Friday, we go back to one to three. Might 